Materialism is a philosophical idea that the material world is all that is. In other words, the most fundamental reality is just matter colliding with matter, maybe obeying physical laws, and everything else has to be explained in terms of matter. That has been a view since the pre-Socratic philosophers. For most of history, it was very much a minority view. It's the popular elite view these days. What's frustrating is that many people identify this philosophical idea of materialism with the practice of natural science itself. But these just aren't the same thing. Science comes from a word that means wisdom or knowledge. And so natural science is just a way of gaining a certain kind of knowledge about the natural world. It doesn't entail that the natural world or the physical world is all that exists. And so there's really no reason, either with respect to the practice of science or the history or the meaning of science, to identify it with this very narrow metaphysical view of materialism. Materialism unfortunately pervades the academy in the Western world. You get it whether you're in primary or secondary education, you get it in spades in college and graduate school. This wasn't always the case. I mean, the modern universities were initially essentially monasteries. They were religious institutions founded in Europe. But sometime in the 19th or the 20th century, materialism as a philosophy just invaded and now pervades the academy. So whatever academic discipline you're in, if you're in physics or if you're in psychology or sociology, materialist assumptions tend to be just sort of grounded in the discipline so that it, it requires a, an independent mind or someone willing to, to buck the system and buck the consensus to actually deny materialism. Even though, say, if you're doing psychology, the object of your discipline doesn't exist according to materialism. That seems to me to be, would be a good reason if you're a psychologist not to buy materialism. It actually denies the existence of the thing you say you're studying. This makes no sense. The scientific materialist wants to say that really only those things that you can touch, taste, feel, measure, weigh, uh, you know, do experiments on, only those things actually matter, only those things exist. So in other words, the only things that exist are things open to our sense impressions. That's a very strange thing to say because of course, we ourselves aren't available to our sense impressions. We experience ourselves as free agents and conscious beings directly. We know that much better than we know anything we could discover through our senses. And yet the materialist ultimately has to say, well, no, that, that's not real. You aren't actually real. Just your sense impressions are real. It's really a very strange claim. Uh, and so the materialism that is so popular in the academy, I think it's popular not for logical reasons or for evidential reasons, but for sociological reasons. If you actually submit it to reason, materialism is a philosophy, it, 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 it collapses almost immediately. So if materialism is true, you as a person, your thoughts, your direct experiences, love, justice, natural laws is real things, logical principles, mathematical principles. Uh, none of these things are real. In other words, all these things that for virtually all of us are of supreme importance, for the materialist, don't actually exist. The only things that exist are material objects. And in fact, material objects at their most basic and rudimentary existence. So in other words, really just fundamentally the kind of micro particles that make up material objects. This is not only a depressing view of reality, I think there's no reason to think that it's actually true. In fact, reasons themselves aren't material objects. What's especially ironic for people that want to identify materialism with natural science is that science itself is incompatible with materialism. Natural laws themselves aren't material objects. The idea of knowledge, the idea that uh, human beings have this capacity for learning things about the material world, that we can have true knowledge of the material world, all those are actually very strange ideas for the materialist. And so the materialism so far from supporting or being identical with natural science, I would argue they're not even compatible with each other. And so always the question 
I would pose to the materialist is, okay, yeah, I understand you have to reduce things to something else. You have to take our experience of love or justice and reduce it to survival instinct. The question is whether you do that thing justice. I mean, clearly not. Explaining something and explaining something away are two different things. And if your explanation of something isn't adequate to the thing you're trying to explain, the problem is with the explainer. It's not with the thing explained. What we want to do, what we will do if we have intellectual integrity is to say, okay, I want an explanation of this thing that is appropriate to it, that actually matches it. So explaining things away, it, that's not an intellectual virtue. In fact, if anything, it's, it's strange and narrow-minded. I would think that the scientific intellectual attitude would be one of openness. We don't know exactly what reality is like in every case, so we want to be open to evidence. We want the evidence to be able to direct us and for us to be able to follow it where it leads. That seems to me is the supreme scientific attitude, not this pre-existing commitment to a materialist ideology. What's odd about the materialist worldview is that even the idea of a worldview is immaterial. It has something to do with these kind of the fundamental beliefs that you hold about reality and that you apply to your experience. Beliefs aren't material objects. And in fact, if you read some very consistent materialists, they'll say the self as we imagine it doesn't exist. So you have selves writing books trying to convince other selves that neither of them exist. I mean, this is the dilemma of materialism in a nutshell. Lots of materialists, people like Carl Sagan or Neil deGrasse Tyson, for instance, will more or less define science appropriately. It's something like uh, test your hypotheses against the evidence, try to look for observations or experiments that could confirm or contradict uh, your hypothesis, and then follow the evidence where it leads. That's science, that's great. But the minute you impose materialism on science, you're basically saying ahead of time what kind of evidence you're willing to entertain. In other words, you're saying ahead of time, we're never going to find evidence that the universe is purposive. We're never going to find evidence of teleology in the material world. We're never going to find evidence that the universe came into existence in the finite past and exists for a purpose. Well, that's certainly, all of those are logical possibilities that I would think what you'd want to do if you're properly scientific is to be open to those possibilities, at least as a possibility, to say there might be something I could observe about the natural world that would suggest that the universe points beyond itself. That seems to me the, the sort of appropriately skeptical but open-minded attitude of the, the true spirit of natural science, not this false materialist uh, masquerade of science. So the scientist, as a scientist, is going to be involved in all sorts of activities that aren't consistent with materialism. Even saying, okay, I'm going to evaluate this evidence and see if it's evidence for, for a particular hypothesis. How do you do that? Well, you don't measure it. I mean, your hypothesis predicts that you'll observe certain things. But the logical relationship between what you observe and your hypothesis is a logical, not a physical relationship, connecting different pieces of evidence under a general category. Logical inferences that move to a particular conclusion. The logical structure of your theory. Uh, the mathematical structure of your theory. The mathematical objects you presuppose in your theory. Your mind, the existence of your mind, the ability of your mind to grasp and to follow all these logical and mathematical inferences. Not one of those things is directly observable. And in fact, uh, saying that they're observable is a very strange thing. So that just every detail of the scientific process itself is not consistent with materialism. No one denies that uh, the brain and the physical body connects in some ways to our mind. The perennial discussion of how, how do you relate the self or the soul and the body is a perennial discussion because it's a difficult question. But this modern kind of materialist idea to identify the brain with the self and the mind, I think is fundamentally misguided. Uh, first of all, we, we don't uh, have a really good understanding of the brain. I mean, we don't even have a well, a well understood model of the 
brain of a fly, let alone a human being. Uh, we know that thoughts, if you do brain scans, that particular ideas and thoughts correlate uh, with things in the mind. But the idea that a thought, that is my thought about something, would be identical with a chemical reaction in the brain or just a pattern in the brain, it just it doesn't even make sense. It's not so much that it's false as it's, it, it's not even a well-formed claim. Thoughts, the essential property of thoughts is that they are about something, either about themselves or about something other than themselves. So just pick any thought you want. You realize it'll have this property. Chemical patterns and reactions don't have that property. And so if you're wanting to explain A in terms of B, A and B need to have the both, both sets of properties. And we see just from a simple uh, you know, elementary school analysis of what a thought is and what a chemical reaction is, we realize these can't be the same thing.